Welcome to Electron Line. So when it comes to three charges on a plane and they're not all lined up, it's a little bit more complicated. So here we have an example. It's a very typical example of one of these types of problems. We have three charges, let's say on the XY plane, and they're all nailed down. The charges can't move. And we're trying to find the force on Q2 due to the presence of Q1 and Q3. So between Q1 and Q2, Two, there's going to be a force of repulsion, so there's going to be a force in this direction due to the presence of this charge, and because this is a negative charge, there will be a force of attraction in this direction, and so we can pl plainly see that we have F12 labeled and F23 labeled. But since F23 is not in either the x or the y direction, we're going to need to find the x and y components of this force because to find the final force, we want to add up all the x components and all the y components together. And to find the x and y components, we need to find the angle. So this angle here must be the same as this angle. Those are alternate interior angles. And so therefore, we use the inverse tangent of the opposite side to the adjacent side to find the size of that angle. Next, we need to find the magnitude of the forces. We want to know how what the magnitude is of 1 F12, so we use Coulomb's law there, and we need to know the magnitude of F, uh, the, the force between 2 and 3, which is right here. And of course, we need to know the value for this hypotenuse, so we use uh, Pythagorean theorem, so we know that this is equal to the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared in meters, so this is equal to the square root of 5 meters. So that would be the diagonal distance right there. Okay. Once you have those values, you then use the cosine of the angle and the sine of the angle to find the x and y components of F23, the force between 2 and 3. And then now we have all the components, so now we simply have to add all the x components and all the y components to find the final vector in the x and y direction, then we simply combine the two. Alright, so that is the strategy. Now all we have to do is plug in the numbers and crank the calculator. So this is 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons meter squared per coulomb squared. So this is equal to Q1, which is 10 times uh, 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And then this one right here is Q2, which is 5 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And divide the whole thing divided by R12, which is 1 meter squared. All right, so how much is that? So we have a 9e to the 9th times 10e to the 6th minus times 5e to the 6th minus equals, and so it's 0 0.45 newtons. 0 0.45 newtons. All right, so we have the first magnitude. Now we need to find the second magnitude. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at the units. So we have coulombs times coulombs is coulombs squared cancels out with the coulombs here. Meter squared cancels out with the meter squared. And we end up with newtons right there. So it's always a good check to look at the units to make sure you did the problem correct, at least. Hopefully you did it correct at that point. All right, so we have 9 times 10 to the 9th newtons meter squared per coulomb squared. Q2 is 5 microcoulombs. 5 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And Q3 is 15 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And the whole thing divided by the square root of 5 meters squared. All right. So what is that equal to? So that's 9e to the 9th times 5e to the 6 minus times 15e to the 6 minus divided by 5 equals, and we get 0 0.135. 0 0.135 newtons, and again, the units cancel out just to newtons. So now we have the magnitude of those two. Now we need to find the x and y components of this right here. So this is equal to 0 0.135 newtons times the cosine of 26.565 degrees. And here it is equal to, that would be newtons, right? So this is 0 0.135. 135 newtons times the co uh, not the cosine in this case this would be the sine because so looking for the y component the sine of 26.565 degrees so now we get the x and y components of that diagonal force so 
times 26.565, that's the cosine, equals, and we get 0 0.121. 0 0.121 newtons for the x component and 0.135 times 26.565 take the sign of that equals and we get 0 0.60 so 0 0.060 newtons all right so now we have the x and y component of the diagonal force so now we're ready to add all the x and y components notice we only have one x component so this is equal to uh, 0 0.121 newtons in the x direction and for the y component here we have two we have one going up which is this one right here which is 0 0.45 newtons in the positive y direction minus that component going down which is 0 0.060 newtons in the y direction and so that is equal to this minus this that would be 0 0.39 newtons in the y direction so now we have the x component and the y component of the final force so we now we can combine them so f is then going to be equal to the x component 0 0.121 newtons in the x direction minus oh i forgot the wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute oh no that's also positive okay right 0 0.39 newtons in the y direction for a moment there uh, i thought it's supposed to be minus it's supposed to be plus they're both positive so there we are that is then the final answer for the force on q2 due to the presence of q1 and q3 and once you can do it for one use the same technique to do it for any of the others and that is how it's done